Hi again. I've been grumping a lot about the absence of any meaningful social struggle here in the disunited kingdom. About how all oppositional politics have been channeled into the Corbyn dead end. There's been a wave of nostalgia about the total defeats like the Grunwick strike 40 years ago now being celebrated. But only six years ago things were different with the student riots of 2010 now conveniently forgotten as activists pour into the Labour Party. The disturbances of 2010 and all too short illustration of the possibilities that flare up once a stullifying pattern of peaceful A to B marches are disrupted. On November the 10th, 2010, during yet another one of these dull events, a mass protest against the rise in tuition fees, a breakaway group attacked, entered and trashed the Conservative Party HQ at the Millbank Bank complex. Somewhat tamed by continental standards, it was something that had never happened previously here in the sleepy UK. The National Union of Students, the left and the entire establishment were in a state of unexpected shock. The protest gained traction a week later on November, Wednesday the 24th, with the students superseded by school kids protesting the removal of EMA grants. The police kettled thousands of these kids in Whitehall, battening 13 to 16 year olds who fought back, detaining them until late evening in the freezing conditions. Kids from the inner city estates hung around the fringes, also clashing with riot police. Many too were to be involved, unlike the students, in the 2011 urban uprisings, but that's another story. The next week's defiant reappearance of the school kids took place in the face of a raging snowstorm. Unlike the students, they learnt from the previous week, splitting into large mobile groups moving through central London, but not causing any substantial damage. The day ended in Trafalgar Square with a pitch battle between the police and the kids who fought back again against the police violence using fireworks and flares, amongst other things. This was serious stuff. The focus now beyond mere student protest. The final most memorable day came on December the 9th, another weekday, when Parliament voted on fees. For that day, Central London took on the appearance of a political uprising. The students, discarding the method of sterile leftist protests, such as a million strong anti-Iraq war march or today's People, People's Assembly shuffles, formed themselves into confrontational blocks, having a full-scale clash with police outside Parliament, lasting into the evening. The official National Union of Students demonstration attracted less than 200 people, but to me, anyway, the more interesting occurrences were outside the immediate area. Thousands of school kids arrived employing fresh tactics yet again. Mobile sound systems, black block attire, anarchist black flags, keeping on the move outside the fringes of the main clash of Parliament. As evening approached, they were joined by the estate kids yet again, and together they avoided or escaped from police kettles while skirmishing with the brutal forces of order. The mostly young mob spontaneously marched through central London with some of the kids raising the slogan, Kill! Kill! Kill the Queen! Even the militant students hadn't breached that particular taboo. An attempt to torch the Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square was made as the mob surged out of Whitehall. By remarkable coincidence, Prince Charles and his Harridan consort were attacked by a part of the mob as they drove by in their limo. With Christmas holidays on the horizon, the protests ceased. The last gasp was the enormous black block that materialised as if from thin air on the day of another toothless TUC march on March the 26th, 2011. Among other things, the Ritz was attacked. Flaming, if rather flimsy, barricades were erected as clashes continued into the late evening. Looking back on it, it's a shame that the student actions didn't include mass occupations that extended an invitation to the school kids, estate kids and other malcontents. Could have turned out to be very interesting indeed, but there you go. I look forward, as we all do, to the next outburst, long overdue. 
From what direction it comes, who knows? But it's on the cards for sure. So, bring it on. I won't be churning out another vidcast until the start of next month. Instead, I shall be debating, or more likely ranting, with David Graeber on the steps of the LSE Lincoln's Inn Fields at about 1pm on Wednesday the 28th of this month. This kicks off the Festival of Ideas and Actions on the LSE campus from the 28th to the 30th this month. Everyone welcome. Come over. Expect some surprises. Help make them yourself. Bye.